Hey everybody, PCB Junkie back with another video. Today what I have in front of me is uh, a set of four different video testers, video signal generators that can be used for testing various different types of monitors. I'll get into that uh, in a little bit, but uh, uh, first I want to thank everybody that has helped me beta test these. Uh, these were actually sent out over the last few months to various people that have uh, uh, requested to participate in the beta test and uh, just want to say thank you to those that have helped and uh, thanks for providing feedback and also uh, some of the enhancement requests that uh, I was able then to incorporate into this project. Okay, so what are these exactly? Well, the idea with this project was to create a set of monitor testers or video signal generators that can be used to test the uh, most common video monitors out there and uh, to make these portable, battery operated and also very inexpensive so that they uh, can be accessible to pretty much anybody that wants to have something like this on hand. Now as you can see the design is pretty straightforward as a result and uh, consists of pretty much uh, a single microcontroller that does uh, most of the work in terms of generating the video signal. Uh, the microcontroller in each case is powered by a CR2032 battery that provides uh, approximately five hours of operating time. And then, as you can see, each one of these has a, a different type of uh, output interface that is used for the uh, various types of monitors that you'll be uh, testing. So this one right here is a VGA monitor tester. It has a VGA plug that plugs directly into the monitor. This one here is an arcade monitor tester. Now this one would be uh, used inside of a, an arcade cabinet that already has all of the uh, wiring uh, done and uh, the wiring in, the, in this case would be compatible with the JAMA standard. Uh, if you don't have a JAMA compatible cabinet, you could use one of my uh, JAMA adapters that convert this interface to the type of cabinet that you have. This one here is a variant on this. Uh, this one uh, is able, you're able to use this one without a cabinet. So this one, as you can see, has the leads and clips that are used to connect directly into an arcade monitor uh, input header. And finally, what we have here is a tester for television sets. It has the compatible outputs to test uh, both CRT and flat panel televisions. All right, so let's now talk about each one of these in a bit more detail. We're gonna start with the arcade monitor testers. We have two of these. They both generate the same types of tests uh, with uh, the exact uh, same types of resolutions here. As you can see, the uh, LEDs indicate the video mode that is currently selected and it can be selected with these buttons right there. So the first button is for the mode and the second button is for the test. The major difference of course is the interface. Uh, this one here has to be hooked up directly to the monitor's input uh, header through these clips right here. This one is a little bit easier to use. It, uh, it's meant for situations where you, where you already have a, an arcade cabinet that has a JAMA harness uh, that's often the case and then you simply plug this in and uh, test uh, directly from the control panel of the cabinet uh, so in addition to the buttons right there you can also use the uh, first and second player one button to toggle between the various modes and tests this one only generates uh, a negative sync signal so it's negative composite uh, JAMA standard type sync. Uh, this one in addition to the standard uh, negative composite sync also has the ability to generate other sync uh, pulses so we have uh, either a separate uh, horizontal and vertical or uh, composite uh, sync in both uh, polarities both uh, positive and negative polarities. 
and uh, I think that's uh, pretty much it as far as the, these are concerned so let me hook uh, these up now I'm gonna hook up this one here to my uh, test uh, rig right there and we're gonna go through some of the uh, tests and the various uh, video modes that are available all right so I hooked this uh, guy up now we're gonna turn on the power and uh, I'm gonna go and uh, cycle through the tests and uh, show you uh, show you the various tests that are available and also we'll talk about what uh, what each one of these tests uh, is intended to do all right so here goes uh, I don't know if you can see this it looks pretty bright on the camera but uh, we have by default the 15 kilohertz uh, standard uh, resolution selected uh, this comes up uh, when the uh, tester is uh, powered on for the first time alright so this right here uh, tells you uh, what firmware version we're on this is 1.0 and then AMT is the arcade monitor tester now this is uh, this screen is actually a test as well the intent here is to uh, be able to use this to uh, confirm that the yoke wiring is correct so your your left to right is uh, is correct and your up and down is correct as well if if it wasn't the case uh, these uh, the lettering would be either mirrored or upside down all right so we'll switch to the next test uh, right here this is uh, your color calibration test uh, we have uh, uh, the ability here to verify that uh, all of the colors are working as expected your uh, red green and blue and of course your white and you can get your white balance make sure that uh, none of these are oversaturated uh, and you would adjust adjust this basically to get the the correct white levels down here uh, so this actually this bar right here consists of or corresponds to uh, about 33% uh, brightness this one would be about 66% brightness and and here you would have 100% brightness right there so if you're adjusting your colors this is basically what you're aiming for you're aiming to uh, to have these things uh, these bars be distinct and also for the uh, white balance or for these uh, particular um, cells to be white or some sort of a shade of gray with uh, each one of them being distinct of course uh, the the outer uh, portion of the screen needs to be black for the adjustment to be uh, correct all right so this is it for that uh, second test we'll skip uh, we'll skip to the next one right there all right so this is your uh, your basic checkerboard this uh, with this you can you can see whether you're uh, the you have any issues with uh, geometry or uh, whether the screen is uh, centered uh, there's really not much more we need to discuss here switch to the next one okay here we have a full screen color cycle test so we'll, we'll go from uh, basically black to white to each uh, color in the RGB set we have the, the uh, green red and blue uh, the blue is not showing correctly somehow but uh, you, with this test you can see whether the uh, screen has any problems with um, any hue like for example if it needs to be degaussed or anything like that this is a good test to uh, to use to determine that and also uh, if uh, you have any burn-in so uh, burn-in is uh, easily detected uh, with this test all right let's skip to the next one so this is your uh, your basic uh, uh, grid and uh, this you would use to see whether there's any convergence issues so for example if you look down here you will see that the the blue and the um, the red may stick out in some areas right this this monitor isn't the best to be honest with you and uh, the problem here with uh, these squiggles is just the basically the the white uh, it's just oversaturated so if I if I turn this down you'll be able to see that uh, this goes back to normal right so there you go so we need to we need to do something like this this was just set up to be a little bit too bright all right so let's skip to the next test right here uh, these are so now I have to crank up the brightness again so 
Uh, these are collar bars. Uh, so this is just a, a nice test to see whether the monitor behaves uh, in a uniform manner as, uh, as it scrolls uh, various different colors. Uh, this is also pretty good at detecting whether there's any problems due to uh, improper degaussing of the screen. And I believe that's going to be it for all the tests. Ah, oh, no, one more. Um, so this is, a, this is a test to confirm whether there's any issues with blooming. So what happens here is we have a square that the rectangle uh, that, it, that gets filled in with white. And then you would watch the edges to see whether the uh, shape of the box changes. And then you would adjust accordingly. So as you can see up here, there's a bit of a problem with this and uh, this could be a result of uh, having this thing set uh, to be too bright. All right, so this is it for this uh, for this tester. Of course, we have the various different modes right here, which are not going to be able to be displayed because this uh, monitor is uh, just a standard resolution monitor. So. So there you have it. Okay, so we'll, we'll go with the uh, the next tester. We're, we're going to look at the uh, the VGA tester next, and uh, we'll hook that up and go from there. All right. So here's the uh, VGA tester. This uh, plugs directly into the back of the monitor, and for the test, I'm uh, I'm bringing out my old Samsung uh, Multi Sync, which is not focusing. There we go. Uh, so we'll plug this in in a second and we'll, we'll go through the tests. Uh, the tests are pretty much the same as we saw with the arcade tester, uh, with the exception of course that the resolutions are different. So this tester allows you to test uh, three different uh, video modes. We have the elusive 15.7 kHz uh, 320 by uh, 240 uh, very uncommon in these types of uh, monitors um, and uh, if if a monitor like that does support that resolution it can be used for arcade gaming and uh, console gaming it's uh, it's it's pretty uncommon and they're uh, they're they're quite a bit uh, they're quite valuable so and uh, sought after so I I do take this on a road with me and whenever I run into a monitor that I'm not sure about I I tend to plug it in just to see if the monitor does actually support uh, that resolution. This one uh, unfortunately does not, but um, uh, but anyway, we'll be able to do the uh, the other video modes. I want to mention one thing: you can uh, see the flashing of the LED. The, so the flashing, uh, frequ not the frequency, but the I guess the length of the on portion of the flash tells you how much battery life there is. So. This uh, you can see is like uh, I would say like 95% on, which means that the battery is about 95% full. So as as the battery depletes, this uh, off uh, cycle of the flash will get longer and longer uh, up until about 50%. When uh, at which point you should uh, change the battery. So let's hook this guy up into the back of the monitor and then we'll power it on and. Uh, talk about the tests so let me just put this back here and uh, we got the make this is the right yep so as you can see this thing is small enough and uh, it sits in there quite well there are some monitors that uh, will not have the space in which case you'll hook up a cable and hook this directly into your cable all right so let's now talk about the tests which are pretty much the same as with uh, with the other testers so here we have the uh, firmware version which is also the yoke polarity in case uh, you're using this with a with a crt type and uh, i have to reach to the back and, and uh, press the other buttons so let's uh maybe first just check the various different modes. Uh, so I believe this is uh, yeah. So this would be the uh, 15 kilohertz mode. As you can see, it's not displayed. This is your uh, 640 by 480, and this would be 800 by 600. Right. 
Okay, so we'll stay with the 640 by 480. Unfortunately, so is there a way to display the info on this? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so we'll now cycle through the tests, and of course the tests are uh, same as with the other monitors, uh, monitor testers. We have our color adjustment. Let me get rid of this again. Color adjustment. We have the checkerboard. We have the uh, the RGB full screen test. We have the grid. We have the scan. The I mean the scrolling color. And we have the bloom test. Now, this is of course meant for a uh, 4x3 aspect ratio monitor, so uh, on widescreen it will not, uh, these tests will uh, not uh, take up the entire screen. But this is just something to keep in, uh, keep in mind when testing VGA monitors. And that's it. So this is pretty much it for the uh, VGA tester and uh, I'll... Uh, I'll now switch over to the final one, which is the TV tester, and we'll quickly talk about that as well. Finally, here we have the uh, TV tester, TV signal generator uh, that I already have hooked up to my awesome little Toshiba. I will not focus. Well, uh, you gotta take my word for it, it's a Toshiba 13 inch uh, television that has uh, component uh, inputs and the uh, Really, that's that's the major difference, I guess, uh, between this tester and the other ones. Uh, While well, the other ones only generate RGB, this one uh, can generate uh, RGB as well as component. And uh, you'd switch that here with this switch right there. So for RGB, we have the uh, green, blue, and red connections right there. And uh, sync is uh, separate. Uh, it's uh, it's on this uh, it's on this plug right here. For a component, uh, you have your Y, which is your uh, green wire. You have your PB, which would be your blue wire, and then PR, which would be your red. I don't have the proper cable for this, I'm sorry. Uh, so I just hooked it up with this one, but uh, yeah, you get the picture. Um, I guess, pun not intended. This signal generator can generate three video modes, uh, 240p, which is important if you're gonna get a TV for console gaming uh, especially if you if your TV is an RGB capable TV or RGB modded TV it needs to support 240p this is basically what all the consoles uh, will want to display uh, older consoles that are mod modded for RGB uh, so it's pretty important that you have a way to test a TV like that and this is a pretty good way to do it uh, with this uh, with this tester uh, this TV does in fact support 240p uh, then we have uh, 240, uh, sorry, 480i, which is your uh, regular uh, interlaced uh, TV mode. This is uh, pretty much supported by all televisions. And then we have the more recent uh, 480p, which is uh, your newer consoles such as uh, the PS2 and uh, and newer. This TV, unfortunately, uh, will not support 480p, and uh, you'll be able to see that uh, in a second. And then. Uh, you know, just to uh, finish off with this, we have the, uh, the typical buttons, the mode and the test, and uh, our off and on switch. Now, uh, one more thing I want to mention. As you can see, there's a part that's not uh, present with uh, with this particular board. Uh, this is not actually the uh, final version. The, the final version of this is a little bit smaller, and it uh, omits that part completely. So, uh, I think that's uh, that's everything. Uh, as far as this uh, tester is concerned so I'm going to now power this on and we'll power on the TV and then we'll go quickly through the different uh, modes and the uh, tests as well and the first thing we should see is the firmware version screen which is also the test that allows you to check to make sure that your raster or your yoke is uh, oriented in the uh, correct manner uh, let's uh, then skip to the next test. So basically these tests here 
uh, I'll, we'll just skip over very very quickly um, they're pretty much the same tests as with the other testers so we have our RGB grid right here we have our checkerboard this is the full screen RGB and I know some of the colors aren't showing right on the camera but uh, it's just the camera's uh, fault nothing to do with the uh, the TV itself the grid right there uh, scrolling color bars and finally the bloom test uh, you can see this TV has a little bit of a problem with this but uh, yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it for all the tests so now I'll show you the uh, what happens when you switch over to RGB basically you end up getting this uh, main reason for that is that the uh, sync is actually right here and this TV has the sync uh, uh, except sync uh, on the green wire itself on the Y wire so it's uh, unless you have an RGB capable TV you're not going to be able to actually use the RGB mode uh, that's only for when you want to mod your TV or uh, have a RGB capable TV and those are uh, pretty uncommon all right so let's put it back to uh, component and then I'll just demo the uh, various modes that we have here so uh, this would be the 480p not sure if you can see that it's not actually focusing right but uh, yeah that's 480p uh, you can see that this TV doesn't actually support that we'll switch back to 240p I'm um, not sure if you're going to be able to see that, but there's a, there's a set of distinct scan lines. And when I switch it over to uh, 480i, you will see that the scan lines disappear. I'm not really sure if it's, uh, if it's very clear on... Let me just switch back here. So I can definitely see the scan lines here. Not so much on the camera's viewfinder. And now they disappear. Let's see again. Um, the camera seems to be picking up the distinct frames of this TV, so um, yeah, it's not really uh, showing uh, that well. But anyway, uh, there you have it. So that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I want to mention one more thing, but uh, let me put the camera down for a second, and I'll, I'll switch the wires around, and uh, I'm gonna demo the last uh, thing to you, which is uh, basically just using this adapter or this uh, tester sorry with uh, uh, simply the composite input with the TV okay and finally I have this tester hooked up with the Y cable which is uh, your composite cable I have it plugged into the front right there and uh, so you can see you can still use this for testing TVs that uh, only have this input however in this particular configuration the tester is not able to generate color so all you're going to be able to get is just black and white information and, and of course for here for the color grid uh, it's just different hues of uh, gray but um, you know you want to make sure in in a case like this that your TV is able to uh, output white and this is uh, the bar that you would be interested in right right here at the bottom all right so the other tests work pretty much as expected of course uh, without colors however right so if we switch over to the checkerboard we can still see it this is uh, the full screen RGB we're not going to be able to get much out of this of course since we don't have any color info and we have our grid and then the various different hues of gray where the scrolling color bars would normally be and finally the bloom test which works as expected uh, in black and white mode so so that's it so uh, you know in a pinch if you need to test the TV it only has a, a composite input you can still do it with this tester you're just not going to be able to get the colors on the screen more information about these is going to be on my website uh, you'll be able to find the link to that uh, in the description of this video so if you're interested uh, please uh, check that out and uh, like I said uh, these are uh, simple, inexpensive testers uh, that can be taken with you on the road. That they're not really supposed to be very sophisticated. The idea here is to make 
video testing or video signal generation for various different types of activities whether it's uh, testing arcade monitors or uh, RGB modding your TV or just simply testing monitors that you you find uh, while thrifting making sure that uh, monitor does support the type of mode that you're interested in that was kind of the goal of this whole project so again I want to thank everybody that has helped me beta test and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did you know what to do so thanks everybody I'll uh, see you all on the next one bye now